Last time, we were introduced to logic gates and the basics of Boolean algebra. In this lesson, we're going to dive headfirst into the world of Boolean algebra by learning how to translate between logic gates and Boolean algebra. We'll also learn two methods for how to simplify complex Boolean algebra equations. Boolean algebra means that any variable has only two states. It is either a zero or a one, or if you like, it is either true or false. As a simple example, we have z equals x or y. z is the output, x and y are the inputs. If we draw a truth table for this formula, it would look like this. We can fill in all the inputs because we know all of the possibilities. Remembering from the previous lesson, the plus sign represents the logic OR gate. So now let's fill in the output of the truth tables. 0 OR 0 outputs 0. 0 OR 1 outputs 1. 1 OR 0 outputs 1. And 1 OR 1 outputs 1. Since the plus represents only a single OR gate, we can draw the logic diagram with the x and y as inputs and z as the output. This process of going from Boolean algebra to a logic diagram is the heart and soul of digital logic, but it is rarely as simple as this example. Let's take a look at the other two digital logic gates and Boolean operations that we learned about in the previous lesson. Here we have the equation z equals x and y naught. The and symbol can be represented by putting two input variables together like here, or you can use a dot like the first equation has. For now, we'll just put the variables next to each other. This equation is a little more tricky, so we'll draw out the logic diagram for the equation first. Here you can see the inputs x and y feed into the and gate but y goes through a NOT gate before it goes into the AND gate, making things a little more complex. The reason the NOT gate is placed in front of the AND gate is because Boolean algebra's order of operations go NOT, AND, OR. Like before, we'll draw out the truth table and list all possible inputs for x and y. When input is 0, 0, the y input turns into a 1, and the AND gate sees 0, 1, so output is 0. When input is 0, 1, the AND gate sees 0, 0, and the output is 0. When input is 1, 0, the AND gate sees 1, 1, and the output is 1. And finally, when input is 1, 1, the AND gate sees 1, 0, and so the output is a 0. The two examples we've just gone through are simple, but they are also fundamental to your understanding of digital electronics. If you like, you can build the circuit up with your breadboard and test the logic out. Now that we have some stronger fundamentals in digital logic and Boolean algebra, we need to test out our skills and see what a more complex problem looks like and how we deal with it. We'll look at a single example and use two methods for solving it. The first method is an extension of what we already know how to do. Say we have the Boolean algebra equation z equals x and y or x and y naught or x naught and y. Our task is to find out what all possible z outputs are. For the given two inputs and to make a logic diagram representing that formula. And the logic diagram should be as simple as possible. You could definitely think your way through the problem by drawing out a truth table and listing out all of the possible inputs, but there's also a shortcut we can take called De Morgan's Law. This law states that the same input ORed with the opposite of itself will always be a logic 1. Here's a quick example of how De Morgan's Law is used to simplify. If we have an equation z equals x and y or x naught and y, that equation can actually be simplified to z equals y and, and then in parentheses, x or x naught, which by De Morgan's law means z equals y, because the x or x naught turns into a 1. If we take a second look at our original equation, we can see a few places 
where a variable is ORed with the opposite of itself. So now we can go ahead and simplify the equation. However, if you stare at the original equation long enough, you will see that it can simplify in more than one way. With these two simplified formulas, we can build the truth table, and similarly, we can build the logic diagram for the simplified equation. The second method for solving these more complex logic problems is by using a tool called the Karnov map, or K-maps for short. For a two-input system, the K-map looks like this box, with all possible states 0 and 1 listed out for both inputs x and y. The boxes in a K-map are filled with a 1 if the specific elements seen in the first K-map are found in our equation. Otherwise, the box gets a 0. Let's rewrite the equation and fill out the K-map properly to see this in action. As we look at the formula, x and y is present, so we put a 1 in the lower right corner of the K-map. Next, x and y not is present, so we put a 1 in the top right box of the K-map. The last element is x not and y. This means a 1 goes into the lower left corner of our active K-map. No other elements are present in the formula, so all other boxes get a zero. To use the K-map to simplify a Boolean equation, you find where two ones are next to each other and circle them. In our case, there's two sets of ones, and therefore two circles. But since the groups overlap, we can only actually simplify one group. So I'll use a dotted line for the second circle. The final step of the K-map procedure is to choose which group you will simplify and which will remain the same. While it may seem slower to use the K-map method and much faster to use De Morgan's law on Boolean algebra equations, when you get to larger multiple input systems, there comes a time where it is actually more time efficient to use K-maps rather than use De Morgan's Law. So K-maps are a very valuable tool to know about and keep in your box of tricks. Let's do a quick recap to remember why we are learning these tricks and how they apply to digital electronics. The formula Z equals X and Y or X and Y not or X not and Y translates over to a logic diagram and schematic that looks like this. Notice how many logic gates are used to produce one single output. You have to wonder if it could be easier. And we proved out using both De Morgan's Law as well as Carnog Maps that yes, the formula can be simplified to Z equals Y or X and Y not or Z equals X or X not and Y with a logic diagram that contains only three logic gates but produces the exact same truth table. And so if we replace our schematic with this new simplified version, it looks like this, a circuit that produces the same output as before, but one that uses fewer parts. Theory and math is one thing, but getting your hands dirty and seeing if it actually works in front of your eyes is something else entirely. Let's take some time and build up the two circuits we just saw. First, we'll build the simplified logic version, and then we'll build the more complex original version and see if they both provide the same output. The parts we'll need to test out this circuit are the jumper wire kit, a breadboard, and from the components kit, a 9 volt battery connector, 7805 plus 5 volt voltage regulator, three red LEDs, three 100 ohm resistors, one 74HC32, one 74HC08, and one 74HC04, and a nine volt battery. To build the circuit, we'll first build a power supply by using a 7805 five volt regulator. The nine volt battery connectors red wire connects to pin one of the 7805 and the black wire connects to pin 2 of the 7805. Now we'll connect the 7805's pin 2 to our ground bus on the breadboard with a green wire 
And pin 3 from the 7805, which is plus 5 volt power, will connect to the red power supply bus with a blue wire. Next, add the three ICs to the breadboard. First the 7404, then the 7408, and lastly the 7432. On all ICs, connect pin 14 to power and pin 7 to ground. To be able to distinguish the two inputs from the output, we will put the inputs on the left side of the board and the output on the right side of the board. And slowly from this point, we will follow the schematic and make the connections necessary for the circuit. With the circuit connected, let's go through the truth table. Initially, we connected the X and Y inputs to logic 0 and 0. As you can see, the Z output is a 0. The LEDs are all off, representing logic 0. Changing the input to 0, 1, now the output changes to logic 1. Changing the input to 1, 0, the output is now a logic 1. And the last state, inputs are 1 and 1, the output is also a logic 1. Now we'll take a look at the original Boolean equation and see if we get the same resulting truth table, as we should. Here's the schematic and logic diagram for that larger, more complicated Boolean equation. The parts we'll need to test out this circuit are the jumper wire kit, a breadboard, and from the components kit, a 9 volt battery connector, three 100 ohm resistors, three red LEDs, one 7432, two 7408s, one 7404, and one 7805 5 volt regulator. To build the circuit, we'll first build a power supply using a 7805 5 volt regulator. The 9 volt battery connector's red wire connects to pin 1 of the 7805 and the black wire connects to pin 2. Next, we'll connect the 7805's power and ground outputs to the breadboard's ground bus and power bus. Then, we'll connect the breadboard's 5 volt power buses together using this red wire. Next, We'll add the four ICs to the breadboard, first the 7404, then the 7408s, and lastly the 7432. On all ICs, connect pin 14 to power and pin 7 to ground. Just like before, in order to be able to distinguish the two inputs from the output, we will put the inputs on the left side of the board and the outputs on the right side of the board. And slowly from this point, we will follow the schematic and make the connections necessary for this circuit. With the circuit connected, let's go through the truth table. Initially, we connected the X and Y inputs to logic 0 and logic 0. As you can see, the Z output is a logic zero, again, looking at all the LEDs being off. Changing the inputs to zero one, now the output changes to a logic one. Changing the input to one zero, the output is also a logic one. And the last state, when inputs are one one, the output is again a logic one. The truth table is exactly the same as the first simplified circuit except this one took a lot more effort to build. Strangely enough, Boolean algebra follows many of the same rules as the algebra you learned in school. There are order of operations, distribution rules, like De Morgan's law, and other rules that make the system work in a purely true-false binary fashion. Digital logic makes heavy use of this algebra system, and so having an understanding of what it is and how it works is vital to understanding digital electronics. The Karnoff map is a nice way for easily simplifying Boolean algebra equations in a graphical way. It is so versatile that it can be used for any number of variable input equations like this four input, one output Boolean algebra equation. Knowing how to use a K-map and how to properly simplify Boolean equations is another important tool to have in your bag of tricks. Because ultimately, a more simple Boolean equation means a circuit that works in exactly the same way, but that also uses far fewer connections and fewer logic devices.
All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. In our next lesson, we'll further explore logic gates and how they can be combined together to make a new digital element called the latch.